You talked about um, the different bean origins and tempering. I'm not a chocolate maker, but I'm fascinated um, by the process and always wanting to learn new things. What do you think is the reason, uh, and maybe you don't have to think, maybe you know exactly what the reason is why one origin bean would temper more easily than another? I think it's the fats, like the cocoa butter, that, that cause that issue. Um, I'm that learning how to go with some things too. And so I, it, it kind of amazes me. My grandmother, she hand tempered like on the marble slab. I never got to do that with her, which was which was sad and probably one reason why I don't really know how to hand temper. I. I just it's a really scary thing to try to do so I, I don't hand temper um so but yeah like she made candy canes too which i don't know like two different colors of candy canes it's i don't have no idea how she did some of that stuff it's just her and i'm i wish i would have been able to see her do certain things i, I will say that i was really super happy that she was still alive when I made the chocolates. So she was able to taste the, the, the chocolates that I made. So that was like, that was great. She was a big fan of caramel. My, gra my grandmother loves caramels and my mom loves buttercream, so. Very cool. I love that your grandmother was able to taste the chocolate. Uh, you talked about hand tempering. I wonder if there's anybody, um, any of the attendees that can share a hand tempering tip that would make it not so scary. Yeah, tempering is scary to me too because there's all this math involved. <laughs> Science and math, my not my least favorite subjects in school. <laughs> yeah. I see on the the chat, someone was uh, talking about using cocoa butter silk. And I've tried to make my own silk before, but I haven't like purchased it. I know um, Chocolate Alchemy will do that certain times of the year and ship it, but I haven't used theirs. I tried to, to make my own, like I said, but I don't think I did it properly. So I just kind of kind of quit with that. Um, so. and, and Michael wants to know, where did you get your packaging and molds designed and made? Um, Tom Rick and I think is, they did the molds. Um, T O M R I C. I think they're out of, around New, New Jersey, maybe, or the Northeast there. Yep, they did the molds for us. Packaging, um, forgot the name. Uh, they're on the West Coast. They did the, the packaging. I think it was custom box solutions maybe um buffalo is yeah okay <laughs> Sorry. Uh, someone would like to know how how has your business managed to survive through the pandemic how have you managed to stay afloat <laughs> the pandemic's been rough um so the timing of it was a bit helpful because we we knew we were going to have a child that was going to be born in February and we knew that would cause us to be off for for a while so we saved um because we didn't know how long it would take to get back up and going we were going my, my in-laws my so my wife's parents they're Japanese so they live in Japan um they had planned and they did end up coming um for my child's birth and, and they stayed and they were would have helped us some if we needed to reopen. Uh, but yeah, we, we did plan to be down for some time. So we were able to, to have that on our side. The worst part was the inn. Um, we take a lot of reservations for weddings and family reunions. So when they started canceling those um, and people weren't allowed to come to our state um, that was was really tricky uh, so we just had to hold on uh, and we were we're used to sacrificing some like I said we lived in a bible camp so certain things we we're able to just do without and in a sense so we kind of like 
took a step back and did some things like that. And we, we took all the opportunities that we could that the, the government was trying to offer as well. Like we just, we have to survive anything that they could offer that could help us these like disaster loans or anything like that. We wanted to try to do, we didn't want to do all this work to get to the point where some like a pandemic just ruined it all for us. So, so we did that and we're, we're still here and we were able to actually focus more on chocolate since we actually shut down our cafe from right after Valentine's, which we were able to stay open until Valen right at Valentine's. And then after that, uh, the daughter came, but so we had one of the biggest Valentine's we've ever had, which was, was great. And then uh, we shut down the cafe completely until November because of the pandemic. And then in November, we set up a way where we could do curbside. So they would order through our website and we would just take it out to them. We operated like that until um, June, this past June. And June, we opened up the doors normally and, and we're still doing that right now. We we're trying to think if that's smart to do or not, but we're still operating like that currently. And then for the rooms, they slowed down and then they got busy again and then it went back and forth. And the summer has been pretty busy, actually. Um, I'm not sure if people aren't able to travel as far and then that's why they come here or if they are more attracted to a less densely populated area. Um, so the, the inn has rebounded quite well. Um, and the cafe now as well too, since we open the doors normally. So we've been able to kind of stay afloat that way. So hopefully this thing doesn't get out of control anymore and we can continue to do so. Thank you for that. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of the inn, we have a question. What is your occup occupancy rate? And uh, they say, considering it's such a small town with what they think might be few attractions, how do you market your, your inn? So yeah. occupancy and marketing. So the, the occupancy changes based on the season um, and in a way how we want to operate. We operate like a bed and breakfast. So we have eight different rooms that have different themes. I'm in one of the rooms now. It's called Rome because the last one that was built. So Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Mm -hmm. So um, fall is huge here. Fall, you're going to have a lot of people coming to see the changes in the beliefs. Um, so you can always count on that. Summer is a hit and miss sometimes, depending. Um, spring is usually pretty good. Winter is usually dead. That's kind of how it works on the end. So it, your, your rates are going to change like that. Marketing, we haven't. I'm one of those guys that don't want to tell people to come and do things until I'm ready. So when it comes to spending money on advertising and try to blast it out there until I'm ready, I'm going to hold off on that. And the way the timing went going, you know, being completely renovated until and like in, right into like a pandemic, I haven't really spent a lot of money on marketing. Uh, so we reach people kind of organically. Uh, there's not a whole lot of lodging options outside of cabins in our area. So when people search for the area, they'll, they'll usually find us. Um, and if they're not wanting a cabin, then we're probably up on their list of what they would like to do. So you add the cafe and pastries to part of that because they get breakfast with it. It's, it's a bit attractive um, to have that. We also have a gigabyte per second for our internet which is attractive too, if you need to do any work while you're traveling as well, or you want to get anything done. So there's certain ways we can market that. Um, and it's, it's grown since we, so we've started to, to the way, to the sense that we want to operate it differently. We don't want to operate like a motel or a hotel. We want to operate like how we operate, like a B and B. So if someone books, we don't want to have someone book right after them. So one in, one out, like we don't want to do that. We want to, to have it set where it might end up where people just come in for the weekend and then go out. And then we take that week to prepare for the next weekend, however we need to do it that way. Um, just depends on how financially we are able to do that, but that would be the goal is to get to, to that point. So it sounds like you work towards 
and are already there creating an experience as, a as opposed to just a place to lay your head, you're creating a destination experience that people um, plan to come for that experience. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the goal. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's see, we have some other questions. Okay, Thomas would like to know, uh, what other chocolate makers do you like? Do I like? Um, so, um, I've had a lot of uh, Manoa's bars uh, from Hawaii. I've had a lot of theirs that I like. Um, French Broad is not too far from us in Asheville. So um, before uh, we were having the child and all that stuff, we took a trip to Asheville and we went to, to their lounge and their chocolate factory and things like that. That was nice. It was good because they not only bars, but they also have the bonbons, so like a bean to bonbon. So that was really nice. I, I liked that. Um, and I've tried several. Um, so I don't, I mean, different makers, different bars. So, I mean, some of uh, Dandelion's bars, they're not too bitter for me. I like them. I'm not a huge fan of super dark chocolate. Um, so when it's just chocolate and sugar, sometimes it might be a little too bitter for me. My wife likes the bitter chocolate more than I do. Um, so yeah, there's to name a few. Um, I forgot the name of the one that I had recently. I think they're from Arkansas. Um, Markham maybe is maybe the first name of it or something. It was good. It was a coffee bar I had from them. And I really liked that one. Very nice. Yes. I've been to um, French Broad Chocolate. It's a nice experience. I like, I like, I like a lot of their bars. One in particular, the India bar, I really enjoyed. Uh, let's see, Chef Andre would like to know, have you tried using the flavor profiles from Japan in your chocolate creations? Some, um, we matcha. So I have a matcha white chocolate. So that's definitely something I have to do. And my in-laws and yeah, they'll let me know if, if it's if it's good enough. <laughs> they are great taste testers for that one. Um, and recently, which might interest some of you guys out there making chocolate, uh, we used a different sweetener that is from a Japanese pumpkin. Um, it's, so it's the extract from that. Uh, it, it's quite nice. It has a little bit of a, a cooling sensation on your tongue, but not like most of the other like artificial sweeteners and stuff like that. And this is more natural too. So that, that was neat to use that. Um, but always, yeah, interested in using different um, ingredients and from Japan, of course, would be great. I've also thought that since we have the different rooms with different themes, um, we could do different bars based on that. Um, so we, we can, yeah, we have London and Paris and Osaka, excuse me, and Berlin and New York, Mumbai and Rome. Berlin is two rooms, they adjoin. So we have like East and West, I guess, Berlin is what we say, it's kind of a joke. Um, but yeah, so we could use any of those countries to inspire chocolate bars and it would totally go with everything that's going on here at the end as well, so. I like that training. I like that train of thought. So yes. Yes, I like finding inspiration. Okay, let's see. We have a question. How do you get your beans from Ghana and how many kilos do you need for a batch? So the Ghana beans came from uncommon cacao. So I got them from there. I, I don't have any relationships with farmers yet. That is definitely a goal of mine that I would like to do one day probably have to be a few years down the road, but to be able to make um, some type of relationship with the cacao farmer would be very cool and then use their beans. So, but for the time being, I still have the distributors, but I use, I use ethically sourced. So I get Ghana from there. Um, kilos, I'm not good. Kilos, I use pounds. Um, so I have a couple different machines that I use. 
the Ghana, I, I use a lot more so I can do up to about 25 pounds of it in a, in a batch. Um, before I was using smaller machines at about eight pounds or actually for the actual nibs afterwards, it'd be more like five, maybe five to six pounds. So. Okay, are there any other questions? I, I don't want to rush the conversation. I just want to see, are there any more questions? And, and then we can get, we can uh, get about the discussion of the announcement. Yeah, we could do the announcement and if they have any other questions about that or anything else, we can come back to it. They might have questions about the announcement too. Sure. Do you. <laughs> well, shall I go? All yeah, right. I, I don't see any new questions. So why don't you, Dustin, go ahead and talk about uh, what's next for, for you. So um, what I would like to do is have a chocolate tasting contest. Um, this year was the first time that we've ever entered one. Um, and it was, it was really an interesting experience. And I got to see a little bit about what goes on and, and how it works. Um, it left me desiring more feedback though. I, I, as a chocolate maker, I want to learn. Um, and I think I need to learn from, you know, like culinary experts, but I also need to learn from regular people too. So like I mentioned earlier, I have people come to my cafe and order coffee. They'll order coffee that's like five, $6 for a cup of some type of coffee. And that doesn't seem expensive, like they're fine with it. But if that would have happened 15 years ago, it would be a different story. So what makes them feel comfortable spending that? for coffee and the coffee is going to be gone, you know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour later. Chocolate bar, craft chocolate, you usually kind of nibble on it more, but you know, some people eat it all at once, you know, we're not judging, right? So we got to figure out what they want um, to get to that point. So I thought it'd be neat to have a little craft chocolate challenge where we have a contest, but the contest, is more for market research. Yes, it's a contest, you can win, you can win something. It's great, it's a challenge, it's fun, that's great. It's, it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be enjoyable. But whether you win or not, you're gonna come away with information. So if you enter, then you'll get information about your bar from the judges. They'll give you all the information that, uh, that they feel, all different backgrounds. And then, you know, if you have packaging, We'll comment on the packaging and all this is free you enter you just send us the bars we're not going to charge you anything um, to enter and the judges i'm going to put the judges up at the end so they're all going to be here so you can send your chocolate to one place all the judges will be here they'll um judge the chocolate and then afterwards we'll probably have a little discussion with each other about certain things i'll probably take some more notes um, it's all about getting information to the chocolate banker. Um, we're also working on some market research through a university to, to also pull some information. And I've been working with the Small Business Association to, to get some industrial, like industry, I should say, um, data as well. So I want to pass that all along to everybody. I don't feel like chocolate makers are rivals right now. I think we are helping each other the more education you can get out there to potential customers is, is how we grow. So we're not in competition from anybody else. Maybe if we're in the same backyard, maybe a little bit there, but for the most part, we're trying to meet new customers. We're trying to educate people and we need to figure out what they want so we can give them that if we want to make chocolate. If we have just a, an idea of what we want to make and how we want to make it, then we just, we just got to deal with it. But if we want to grow the industry and we, we need to figure out what people want uh, so we can have the same end game of, of the sustainability and, and all that, all that greatness. So that's basically what this contest is going to be. It's going to, the judging will happen in January. Um, basically you can, I'm going to have a form online for people to fill out, to be able to submit um, 
their bars and everything. Uh, but we're not going to have a deadline on like like a window where people can send their bars. They can send their bars at their own convenience as long as it gets to us before we do the judging. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that. So I think that's yeah. Any questions? <laughs> I have I have a question. Uh... Is that will this contest be open to just U.S. chocolate makers, or is this an international invitation? Since international, have... yeah, international. Um, yeah, we want to to help anybody who wants the feedback. Um, I would say it would be most helpful to to people that are probably smaller chocolate makers, not the not the bigger guys that are already, I mean, they're not industrial by any means, but not, not your huge makers that have probably got teams that do this anyway for them. Um, so it's probably gonna benefit smaller makers more. Um, but if you're a bigger maker, you can send it as well. The, the only thing that you know, we ask is that your cacao is you know, ethically, ethically sourced, um, that you know, you're not using commodity cacao, basically, and 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 that's it. And you can even be doing it from the nib still. You don't you don't have to be roasting and, and all that yet. If if that's where you are, I mean, we're trying to help people get into the industry, help people grow, and and tell them which direction might be beneficial for them if they if they want. And you'll have all those. Um rules and or i don't want to say rules because that makes it sound uh scary but you'll have all those sort of guidelines um laid out when folks want to contact you they'll know you know what how they'll qualify whether they're making it from nibs or um you yeah. basically want them making their own chocolate not not um from couverture that they've gotten from someone else and turned it into you, you want them to be making their own yes yeah they need to be making their own so yeah, yeah they yeah. yeah not even if i guess the the company made it ethically and then you just have theirs and you melt it down now you need to be doing kind of the bean to bar process i just want to make sure that you know if you're not roasting and stuff yet but we, we didn't start with the roasting process we started from the nibs so we can feel a little bit more understanding about about that not that that other part isn't important but being able to grow to certain parts like that, right? So as long as you can get your nibs from somewhere that's ethically sourcing them, like, you know, Chocolate Alchemy does it. So they get it and you know, they'll take care of part of the process for you. And it, it's still, the end game is still there for what we want to accomplish as the, you know, the movement for cacao. Like, yeah, so. uh, Chef Andre has made a comment and I'm glad he did because that's that's what I see for you. He's saying that to, to push on with your competition idea and uh, he's saying that the, he sees that evolving to a chocolate festival uh, at the hotel uh, in the small town. Uh, I think it'll, I think, it, I think that's in your future. <laughs> so I would be the happiest man in the world if we could have a chocolate festival here. Um, sadly, I, at this point, I think I would be doing a disservice to the other makers that I would invite if they, if they are wanting to make money. Um, because my area is so small, it would be really hard for them to make money at an event. Even if I, you know, even if it's everything's free, I mean, just getting here and selling and all your your time and all that stuff, I think we're not there yet. But um, that doesn't say we won't be because it can happen. And I think year one is going to be the year that we focus on getting that known, so in the future we can make that happen. Um, and it would help with there if there was more. Um, regional chocolate makers that got on board with something like this is definitely going to help a bit more. Um, but we've got, we got to start somewhere. And we, we know that. We, we know what we want to do. And sometimes that doesn't always happen until a few years or so later. Um, but definitely having that here would be, would be fantastic. Um, yeah. So what, what you're doing now is planting the seed, right? 
Yeah, and actually, I need to take this moment to say that we're not so far along in this process that if anybody out there wants to help, send me an email. We could use it. Um, we've, we've gotten to the part where we're working on the media kit, the thing I just showed you, but we're working on other um, parts of the media kit that we'll be sending to judges, to sponsors, and to chocolate makers uh, to let them know about what we're doing and what to expect. And, and, and that's where the form will come in um, on how you submit it and everything like that. So we're, we're still working there. I've got it organized enough to, to have that starting point. I had this opportunity on the webinar to be able to announce it. So that's what we're doing, um, but we still have more time to make everything better. So if there's anybody out there that you know, wants to be part of that, let me know. And as for judges, uh, we're how we're seeking the judges right now because it would be hard to get people here and pay for them to come here. We are seeking sponsorships, but it's going to be hard to pay for people's flights from different areas to come. So, I mean, if somebody wanted to do that, fantastic. But if we would like, we don't want anybody to be out. Um, so we would like to pay for someone's gas to come and then I'm putting them up in the rooms as well. So it's kind of got us looking more around the area at uh, culinary artists or food writers in, in Kentucky and some food influencers and things like that. Uh, we would love another chocolate maker, of course, or two. Uh, we would love someone like Coco Town. Um, we, we would really want to get a diverse background and we do want a couple regular just chocolate lovers that are not in the industry. Um, we like their feedback too. So we're, we're trying to set a model like that. Um, Thank you, Dustin, for, for speaking to that. Uh, that was my next question that Thomas posed was, how are you choosing your judges? And you just, you just answered that question. I love that you are, um, for judges, looking for sort of a, a wide range of um, palettes, let's say, from the just the completely inexperienced to those with, you know, with some experience. Um, so that you you get a variety of feedback. Yeah, I mean, if, if we're being honest with ourselves, we all have different tastes, right? So what I like compared to what my wife likes is, is a lot different. And, you know, who's to say which is actually better um, in a sense, like quality wise and, you know, other outside of like, different things with, you know, smoothness and, you know, textures and things like that, right? So there's a lot of people like that. And if you take into account how craft beer and specialty coffee grew um, from people that have the passion kind of like us or other people that, you know, really get onto those notes that just, you know, this is, you know, to just somebody wanting a frappuccino that might have coffee powder in there or something like that and not really coffee. So you have that movement to grow it that way. Not that we ever want to be a Starbucks or anything like that. We want to be on the other end, but sometimes it takes somebody to be a Starbucks to let other people like us be what we need to be. Um, so it's easy to think they're evil and don't do quality because they've grown further like they've grown out of that maybe they started and then they got too big it's hard to control that um but it made the general public so aware that it gives us the ability to kind of do what we need and do what we want to do without having to educate so many people all the time it's just that's kind of i don't know where, why i went off on that little tangent but anyway that's that's about the different tastes. So having different backgrounds and not, you know, I think will be very beneficial. And I'm not saying that these other contests um, don't do a good job at that. I'm, I'm, excuse me, I'm sure they do. I mean, that, you know, that's what they do. I'm sure they're fantastic at it. And they get these people that are fantastic too. Um, it's just another one. And with more information, and geared towards maybe smaller companies um, and definitely a nonprofit thing uh, 
just to help people. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's one of the things I love about this industry is that people are so willing to share, share their knowledge, share their uh, information. Uh, no one is trying to climb over over each other to get to the top. Everyone is sort of, uh, you need me to carry you a while, I will, and then I'll carry you a while, however that shows up. It's such a um, inspirational industry of people working together to help each other. I would really love it if somebody would raise their hand so I can open your mic and whether you have a question or a comment, I'm sure Dustin would like to hear from you. Don't be shy. <laughs> and thanks everybody for like, you know, interacting and stuff and asking questions and, and being interested in what we do. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate uh, Coco Town giving me this opportunity to, to speak to everybody. Okay, we have a few hands popped up. So let's see, Michael, I'm gonna open your, I've pressed allow to talk and you are, you are able to unmute yourself. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, Dustin, uh, thank you. Oh, S sorry, Michael. I think I, my finger slipped and I muted you. Okay, I think I'm back. There you go. Sorry. All right. uh, I want to thank uh, Dustin and Coco Town for uh, um, this opportunity. Uh, this is a really neat um, webinar uh, for us who are just starting and being to bar uh, chocolate and just getting our, our, our toe in the water. Um, uh, really uh, inspired by, by your story of how you basically turned this hobby uh, and, and a family tradition into, into something that's really, really fun. I'm looking at this starting a similar thing but i'm on the other end of my employment i'm looking at retirement and then doing something similar uh probably in hawaii uh with our our company uh which is uh, pepe's magic beans um pepe there as you can see there on, on our uh, on our on our photograph he's our our mascot and our chief financial officer for the company <laughs> that's part of why we're losing our uh, losing so much money but um I did have a, a quick question. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about, you know, how much you uh, would would buy at a time. How large are your batches? Right now, we're we're doing very small batches. You know, usually up to like four pounds of, of chocolate processed at a time. How 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 large of a batch are you are you working with? Well, the chocolate processed at a time, um, I. I was doing anywhere between like eight, nine pounds there until I was able to get a bigger machine that can handle uh, about 25 pounds or, or more. So I don't do every batch like that. I have some chocolates that I prefer to do the smaller batch. And then if I wanted, like I told you, I like the Ghana chocolate. So uh, the dark chocolate Ghana, about 65% or something is I'll use the big machine to make 25 pounds of that. Same with milk and same with white. Um, but when it comes to specialty, other specialty ones that I do, I typically use the smaller machines, uh, the smaller grinders to, to do that. Um, just, it's just easier to, to get out that bar and to have people taste it and see what they like. And then if it's something that can sell well, uh, then I'll, I'll use the bigger machine uh, with it, but mostly, I'm at the stage where I do a lot of, I mean, probably big, probably companies call those test batches, but you know, about 30 bars or something from them. And, but that's kind of how we operate it right now. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So we also have, and forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Ad Adansi. I've opened your mic and you're welcome to ask your question or give your comment. Right. Good evening from Ghana. Um, my name is Winnie. Can you hear me? Yes, Winnie, we can hear you. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So um, greetings from Ghana. And um, I also want to thank um, Coco Town for the opportunity he has given us. Um, in fact, I am also encouraged by what uh, Dustin gave us. 
Um, some of us are also equally small um, to medium chocolate making companies that um, we are coming up gradually in Ghana. And um, concerning the competition, I wish you can create uh, probably an account and uh, some of us can also enjoy being it a virtual. Some of us can also enjoy and have access to what is being done and then we can also learn something from it. Again, uh, I have a little, I don't know if it's a concern or it's a comment, but um, I know we are all going through one or two challenges um, through this pandemic, but um, there's something I want to share. For Adansi Sweet Company, one thing we managed to pull through during the pandemic is the development of chocolate chips. We realized that um, a lot of people go into baking during the lockdown and then they need varieties. And obviously, you know, using the chocolate chips, um, it's very interesting because you can easily nibble on it and then you can also use it for your uh, cookies and other things, I'm sure others are also aware. So I would want to encourage those of us in the chocolate industry that, yes, we are in a tough season or difficult seasons, but um, we can also try to be more creative with our chocolates, come up with different things, different ideas, and then you'll be surprised that the world will definitely welcome our new products. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as for the information, uh, if you want to just email us, if, if you, I mean, we would love for you to enter the competition, but if it's not feasible for you to enter it, um, but you would still like some information about like the market research and, and such, uh, just let us know. I, you know, we're not just gonna say you have to enter to get it. We, we wanna do this for everybody. So just uh, let me be aware of that. And then when it comes time and I have that information and in, I guess probably around late January, I'll be able to send it to you. So just reach out and we won't mind sharing resources at all. Anyone else like to be invited to talk? And Dustin, maybe you'll give me permission. What I'll do is share, if if that works for you, share your email with just the people that are in attendance, were in attendance today, uh, so they can reach out to you about the competition. Although you're gonna provide that information on your website and your social media as well. Yeah, so about the competition, um... Yeah, you can always email or reach out on Facebook or Instagram ab about it. Uh, like I said, it's it's free for a chocolate maker to enter. I think we're looking at about needing 11 bars is what we're going to try to do to get a, a good enough variety of, of judges. So you'll basically have to send us 11 bars of, of doesn't have to be a certain size. It's just what you sell because we'll be judging kind of the presentation of, of that and, and of everything. Um, certain things won't be judged for points for the contest, uh, like presentation, like packaging and such, um, but we'll be able to give you certain feedback on it. And, you know, so if you're able to ship like 11 bars and that's all it's gonna take for you to enter the contest. Um, so just uh, if you have any questions about it or, you know, if you have suggestions or anything, you can let me know. Um, I saw that the date, yeah, the date of the contest will be the weekend of January the 15th. So we need the bars here before then. Um, I don't have the form set up now, um, but I'll hopefully have the form set up soon. So you can ship at your convenience. It's still a little warm here. So I'm, I'm trying to, get away from a lot of chocolate being shipped in, you know, hotter times. But, you know, like if you're in Ghana, that's, you know, it's not going to change. So, um, yeah, so you can pretty much reach out to me if you need to send it earlier or anything to before the form. I can kind of tell you what we're going to want and everything about that, but we'll have that ready soon. 
you can fill out the form and send it anytime as long as we get it before the 15th of January. I just thought of a question with some of the folks that are just starting out, maybe they don't have their wrapper or their logo developed. They can still send their chocolate bar um, yes. for the flavor evaluation. Um, and, um, you know, that's an evolution. So if you don't, don't worry that you're not at the place where you have your concept fully developed, maybe through the feedback, some something will come to light and that will help you develop your your um your logo or your concept in some way yep, exactly if you don't have packaging the only thing we're going to ask is that you have it properly labeled like you know with your ingredients for food safety reasons um yeah outside of that you're not required to have packaging you're not required to have any specific mold with your logo or anything like that on it that's not a requirement of it um what we're doing is just giving feedback for things but if you did have those, we would add an additional comment or things about those um, um, to give you any help we possibly can. And and just to, to reiterate, the only cost to the chocolate maker is to get it to you. The cost of making the chocolate, which I know is can be a great expense, um, but then also to ship it to you. There's no fee to be a part of this contest and to get the feedback. Um, will you tell us, Dustin, what are the, the categories? So we'll have a, a top overall bar, and then we'll have a top dark, top milk, top white, and then a top inclusion bar. And we're talking about inclusions, meaning like things on top of the bar or like in the bar, like you can physically see, like, for instance, we make a coffee bar that we grind the coffee beans up in with the nibs. So there's other than tasting coffee, there there's no other coffee like chunks or anything there. We don't consider that an inclusion for our contest. I'm not, I know some places would probably consider that an inclusion because it's a flavor outside of vanilla or, or something. Um, but we're going to consider inclusions, things that you can kind of physically see. Um, so that will be the difference and that will be noted. But yeah, we'll have those five things. I'm, I'm trying to get some sponsors to help with being able to purchase awards. I would love to get some awards that we can send out. You'll, whether or not we have an, a, a physical award we can send out, you'll definitely get the vector image of, of the, the award we're not going to charge you for that you know you we just send it to you so yeah you're right you know you don't have to pay anything to enter other than the cost of love you have in your chocolate and shipping so and when you said uh and forgive my ignorance you said vector image is that like so they can print it on their on yep. their label they'll be able to print um yeah, you'll, you'll have the, the image. Um, I tried to get it completed to, before today to have it on there, but I couldn't get it uh, done. But you'll have that image that you can lay over um, your product if you want. Or if you don't have any packaging, you, you can use it on your social media or, or wherever. You'll, you won't have to have a graphic designer make it where you can just lay it over something. You should just be able to lay it over um is what i'm trying to say and you won't have to purchase it or there's no fee and, you know as long as you actually won that award and you can use it for that so oh that's great and you've even thought of uh sparing the expense of having to hire a graphic designer to integrate it into your 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 um wrapper or your social media so you you're saving them yet again another another um expense which is um it's a nice detail i think yeah and the, the there's a hassle involved in doing some of that uh we also we won um an award for some of the chocolate we sent this past year and they will let us print off um we can print the certificate and they said there's no fee for that but there's a ten dollar fee for something else 
And I, I mean, it's $10. I was going to pay it just to print it off. But then I went through the, the form to put in my information to pay it. And then it wasn't accepting it or something. And there was just, so I guess I have to go back later. So there's a little bit of hassle involved in certain things like that that get added. This is going to be a direct email to you with all your information and everything. And, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time. So we want to make that easier for everybody. Um, you know, $10 is not that much, but the hassle of getting it now has been more than $10. So. Right, right. Your time is, when you're a small business, your time has a dollar value. <laughs> yeah. And remembering to go back, I didn't even remember to go back to do it now until you, you, we talked about it. But I got to go back and do that. Hopefully I still can. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Well, we still have a few minutes left in our time. If anybody would like to ask any more questions or I'm happy to open the mic again of anyone that would like to uh, give a comment or ask Dustin a question. While people think about their comment or question, Dustin, is there, um, as we're starting to wind down, is there uh, one or two things that um, you as a small business owner want to leave those like um, Michael who are just starting out uh, some, I know we started with the what you wish you knew when uh, question, but is there, <laughs> Anything else that you can think of that you want to leave some of our new, you know, like, people that are just starting on the journey? Like in Michael's um, instance where he wants, I guess he's in Hawaii, um, which is a good tourist destination. If he could figure out a way to provide um, like a, a lodging experience to it or any type of event experience to it, whether the groups came or just individuals came where he could do that with his chocolate. I think that would be phenomenal. Uh, so he's, and he has some, you know, like potential there. I would assume like, I didn't see that potential where I was at until later on. Um, but now we're we're not that far away from a touristy just a tourist destination that's actually growing, um, so that's the path that we're gonna try to move forward towards. So maybe that would be of some benefit to him if he could try to tie some of that in together. Great, thank you. That's sort of that um, sort of thinking outside the box. Um, cocoa is more than chocolate mindset yeah experiences are huge um so and then people talk about them so that that's great if you can give someone an experience and then they talk about that um yeah i think he just that he just messaged yes he's talking about they are planning an eco eco tourism aspect of their cacao farm Oh, so Michael, you're going to not just be a chocolate maker, you're going to be a cacao, a cacao farmer. Yeah, I mean, that's even more experience giving. Yeah, yeah, definitely tree to bar. Tree to bar. Yeah, definitely more experience there where you can do a tour of like your farm. And I mean, that's a whole that's a whole business there. So especially in Hawaii, I think that'd be great. Yeah. All right, Thomas. Thomas is asking, do you see yourself growing over the next few years, 10 tons per, per year plus? <laughs> so probably not um, huge, uh, 10 tons, I um, mean, I'd like to, um, but to give you an idea about what I want to do, uh, I would want to still be the one making the chocolate, hopefully when my daughter grows up more she can be involved in that process and if we have to take away some attention from our cafe to do more chocolate then then that's fine I don't I don't mind um switching our time a little bit in that direction to produce more chocolate uh, the thing is retail wise we won't be able to I mean just 
probably won't be possible to sell that much chocolate. So we're talking about wholesale accounts and being able to, to expand out that way. Um, and that's something we would like to do. Um, how big, I'm not certain, depends on how the market itself grows. We're still, even though, like if you go to some of the bigger cities in Kentucky, it's, there's still not that big of a market for craft chocolate yet. I think that'd change. I think that'd change relatively soon actually. Um, but being able to sell in different stores also will help our in. So that's something we would like to do. I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, about going much further than that. We don't really have the capacity. It would be really hard for us to store that much cacao. Um, and if we were to grow that way, we would have to purchase uh, or build a new building um, to do that with. Not something I wouldn't, uh, that'd be great, but I still want to be in control of everything. And then I, I'm not the business guy. I'm more of the, I want to make sure I'm happy doing what I'm doing and that my family is happy and that type of live life for enjoyment um, direction of, of life than thinking about constant growth and numbers and, and things like that. I just, I don't wanna go down that path too much, but I know I need to some to survive so I can do what I wanna do. So I have to find that balance. So hope that answered that question. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Dustin, for that. Um kind of full circle um, reminder. That's, I think, another takeaway for me that that you can be happy doing what you love doing and that that can be the main goal. I think if you're happy doing what you're doing, the money will follow. You know, you put your passion forward. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. All right, well. I will leave you with the last word. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us and um, stay tuned for our next Empowering Chocopreneurs webinar where we will be talking about um, distributorship and finding the right distributor that, that's best for you and your bean to bar chocolate business. Um, but with that, Dustin, I'm gonna leave you with the last word. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, this was a great experience for me. I, I've always wanted to be able to tell my story from start, kind of start to where we are now. Um, I should do that on YouTube. I should make things like that. I just haven't, and I, I don't really know why, probably because it takes time and I'm kind of a perfectionist, but to have, just to be thrown in here to do that is great. And I appreciate that opportunity. And uh, I mean, I love to share our, our experiences. I think that's part of the reason why I kind of like doing the in part and traveling and, and talking to people with, with you know, the same desires. I learned a lot through meeting other people. So I think it's, it was great for me to be able to do this. And I appreciate Coco Town uh, giving me that opportunity. And not only did they give me the opportunity, I've, I've, I've purchased Coco Town machines before and they're, they're just great at helping you with everything you need. And you know, they, they make you feel like you're part of the family almost because you know, they're, they're wanting you to grow, they want you to succeed and they follow you and seem to like care what you're doing. Um, so, I mean, that's great. So I'm glad I could be a part of this. Uh, I think it's great that you're doing this. And um, I look forward to trying to be able to listen to more of these myself, especially if you do them on Tuesdays. Saturdays are hard because of the cafe. But uh, yeah, uh, this is wonderful. So thank you again so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dustin.